So I think the most remarkable case is the most recent case. And, and this was a young woman uh, in her 20s uh, who uh, the boat, we're not entirely sure what happened, but somehow the boat sank in Puget Sound and, and she was rescued by the Coast Guard. But it took quite a bit of time to find her. And uh, our estimates based on the sort of reconstructing the timeline is she had at least two and a half hours of CPR from the time she was picked up uh, until the time we got her onto ECMO here. Um, and you know that's a lot of CPR as somebody who's basically dead for two and a half hours. Um, and what's remarkable about this case is that not only did did she recover uh, by our ability to warm her up, and she was very profoundly cold, to warm her up with this and get her heart going, but her neurologic status was was essentially normal when she woke up. And to us, that's an incredible save, really. So this is it's all contained in this one little box, which is nice because that means you can you can easily transport it with the patient. You can just lift it off of this cart and transport it on the bed on the stretcher. Uh, it's been used in air air ambulances and things like that. The machine itself, which controls the device, uh, and then it has attached to it this integrated unit, which has a centrifugal pump, and then the the bright, bright red thing is the oxygenator. So think of it like the pump is acting like your heart and pumping the blood through the machine. And the oxygenator is acting like your lungs. It's taking carbon dioxide out and putting oxygen in. And then this tubing, which is cut off here, would normally go to a patient, right? So you'd have one end that would, the blood would drain out of the patient into the device, through the pump, through the oxygenator, and then come back out and into the patient. And that allows us to provide both heart and lung support, depending on what the patient needs. We've used it, obviously, for rewarming of patients. It has a heater on the bottom. This big thing on the bottom here is a, a heater cooler device that connects directly to the, to the bottom of this unit through, these, through this tubing. So what that allows us to do is set the exact temperature we want the, the blood that's circulating to be. So if somebody's very cold, uh, like the patient we had recently, where their core temperature was, was so cold that their heart wouldn't work at all, you can hook them up to this and it rewarms very, very quickly and that allows you to get the heart started again. For just lung support, you think of anything that causes very bad lung injury or lung failure, right? So it could be a medical cause like a very severe pneumonia. Uh, it could be the flu, um, very severe cases of the flu uh, this has been utilized for. Or it could be very severe traumatic injury like the, the pilot that we took care of who had a blast injury to his lungs. For patients who need cardiac and uh, respiratory support, things like pulmonary embolism, which is a big blood clot that goes to the lungs, and we've had a couple of those cases where we've used it and had very good outcome. Again, it buys us time to get that blood clot to break up and get the lungs to work again. And then it's being used in some patients with uh, heart failure uh, that we think might be recoverable, so like viral infections of the heart or an overdose that affects the heart that will, that will get better with time. The key is that it's a bridge. Right? It's not a definitive, it doesn't fix the underlying problem, but it buys us time to support a patient while the underlying problem either fixes itself by the you know, lungs healing or the underlying problem, you know, we can intervene on in another way. We've had a 60% survival rate overall, uh, and everybody that survived has had good neurologic function. And to us, that's the most important thing, right? We don't want to keep people alive if they're, if they're not going to have good neurologic function and be able to, you know, return to their normal lives.